Ms. K. Tanalashmi. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, I rise in support of the bill. I support the move on the general expansion of places to be prescribed as specific places with the intent to have more smoke-free public areas in line with the overall goal of discouraging smoking among the population and with the hope that with such restrictions protect the rights of the non-smokers to breathe clean air. That is smoke-free air and for non-smokers to gradually reduce smoking and eventually give up the habit. Smoke-free areas will help reduce the non-smokers' exposure to harmful second-hand cigarette smoke. So I understand that the government's long-term policy goal is to prohibit smoking in all public areas except at designated smoking areas to protect the non-smokers from the harmful effects of second-hand tobacco smoke. In this case, enforcement is going to be a real challenge even though it is an offence for a person to smoke in these smoke-free areas. Therefore, the onus must be on the operators and premises managers to stop patrons, visitors, customers and staff from smoking in such prohibited areas or request that they leave the premises which may affect their businesses. There must be public education to encourage and empower non-smokers to step up by reminding smokers not to light up in smoking prohibited areas. There are also concerns that if the community were to be bold enough to do so, they can inevitably be abused by the smokers. Therefore, it is important that we also educate our smokers to smoke responsibly with the community in mind and to do, and to do so in smoking areas only. So, though I support the bill, I have the following comments and clarifications. Sufficient time should be provided for managers and owners of the spe specific places to set up a designated smoking facility. Many conscious non-smokers have the view that having a designated smoking facility is indeed a compromise by the authority and that the government should work towards removing such provision completely in the long term. In anticipation of backlash among some segments of the population, there is also a need to explain the caveat that comes with no smoking zone, which prohibited areas and that there will be designated areas where smoking is still permitted. A generic concern would be when we pro prohibit the sales of a commodity, there will be a likelihood of a black market. Applying the same concept by further restricting the areas that people can smoke, are we inevitably creating a black zone? How can we ensure a good balance of prohibition, regulation and enforcement to ensure that smokers comply with the regulations without having to dram dramatically increase enforcement officer presence? If you are very serious about making the large part of Singapore a smoke-free city, can we make use of latest technology, predictive analytical programs as well as AI to identify violations and potential violations by smokers as well as errant operators? Similar to Snap Safe apps introduced by Mom for snapping unsafe practices work and safe work practices, we can also create Snap smoking apps to empower Singaporeans to report such violations real time. There is a need to review the level of penalty for those who breach the law. The current penalty does not send a stern warning to those who are affecting the non smokers who are in most danger of passive smoke. Sir, notwithstanding this, I thank the government for making this an important subject to ensure every Singaporean have the right to live in a clean and green environment and that they are also entitled to breathe smoke-free air. This, this would also serve to help us with our endeavour to be environmentally friendly. Thank you.